host the podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. And today, um, in a bit late with Martin Smith, who is the founder and MD of Talent Drive. Thank you for joining me, mate. Thanks. Nice to be here. And um, just to set the scene, we're in um, a place called Eight Club, which I recently signed up to in one of their meeting rooms. And it's a bit fancy, isn't it? It's very fancy. It's all right. I'm Sparkling really water's on point. Yeah. Sparkling water. Um, yeah, I wanted to have somewhere where one, I can do podcasts a bit more flexibly. Um, and it's actually a bit of a nice place as well. Lovely. Good location. Yeah. So really excited. So um, Martin, where I always like to start, as you know, how did you end up in recruitment, my friend? I've always wanted to be a recruiter. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. No, well, uh, everyone, I think most people that are on this podcast, I'm sure, say a similar thing in terms of falling into it a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I just I finished at university and to be honest, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, what did you do at uni? I did sports science and English. Okay. So glorify going to a PE teacher, but that didn't happen. Um, so, yeah, I just I, I wanted to work in London. Um, I knew there wasn't many jobs down in Sleepy Pool. Where I'm from in Dorset. So um, I signed up to a load of Rectorex and all sorts of different things. And Did you know they were Rectorex? I didn't at the time, no. <laughs> I actually didn't at the Everyone time. Know yeah. not. No so one does, do they? So I was like, you're a really nice person. And why do you keep talking about that? Yeah, and then I and then, uh, <laughs> had all these different uh, meetings and conversations with some real characters, to be honest with you. And then um, uh, lucky enough, landed a, a, a business in London that was kind of in sort of startup mode. It was a couple of years old. Um, and I was, sort of, I think, the fourth person to join. Oh, really? Wow. So it was quite new. Um, and it was in, obviously, in procurement supply chain which I'd, I'd never even heard the word procurement before yeah so i was just like well, what the hell's this yeah um and then just sort of went from there really but it was it was quite cool because it was kind of blank piece of paper there wasn't much of a database yeah sort of go in and find your market what so. what, what made you pick them i i like the idea of like that startup feel mm. not complete startup but you know a couple of years experience had some traction. i mean four people mate that's pretty that's intense yeah yeah absolutely and yeah. it was in a it was in a, a real small uh, office um just off fleet street and it was uh like the the, the the lady i joined was fantastic like she was a great great uh md but it was yeah it was quite intense at times you know yeah. when, when it's going well nowhere to hide right? yeah 100 percent. yeah that's yeah, it yeah there's a well there's a small toilet down the hallway but there wasn't much room <laughs> there to hide so yeah absolutely. what did that grow to by the time you left time i left it probably got to about 18 to 20 okay. people so yeah it scaled itself well yeah absolutely. okay so just to um set the scene then yeah so you have so that was your first job in recruitment and you worked there recruitment from um, circa four years yeah is just that right yeah. yeah um circa four years and then you went internal yeah yeah and then you went back to agency yeah. and then now wh how long was that for again the stint back uh about four and a half years four and a half years and then now you've set up on your own. And how many months are you in? Uh, just come up to six months. Six months. Start November, six fresh. months. Yeah, fresh. Okay, so nearly lot, obviously nine years in agency. Yeah. Nearly 10 years altogether. And then obviously stint internal as well, right? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting, mate. Yeah, it's Excited an interesting... to unpack this. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting pattern. Okay. So first first things first then have you as have you always done perm contract mix or mainly perm yeah mainly, mainly perm. perm a little bit in contracting more recently before i went on my own but mainly but predominantly perm. Perm, yeah, yeah yeah okay cool so let's just um think a bit about obviously early days in recruitment right before um we move on but <clears throat> obviously didn't have much of an idea as to what recruitment was got into obviously uh, a business that was willing to grow a bit of a startup you had obviously direct access to the md the business owner yeah. that's something that i really um found valuable and something that i really was drawn to so how were your first 12 months in recruitment i'm always interested to ask people about that if you remember yeah yeah customer it, look i mean the first three months were tough mm. um like really tough um i think i'd seen some people around me that used to talk about oh you get your first deal in the first like four to eight weeks that was like seems to be the benchmark there and week 10 and i still hadn't landed a yeah. fee and i was just thinking is this for me am i mm. very good i was living on my own in some little box flat in in uh, in north london and, and nice. I was, not a lot of my mates were in london at the time so it, was, it, it got a little bit lonely at times yeah, sure. And um, and the people that I was around me were more experienced recruiters, so they'd yeah. kind of been there, seen it, done it. So I was the sort of the graduate coming in. Um, so the first few months were really tough. Um, I, I managed to win some jobs early on, but I just couldn't seem to. How like did, what, did you go straight into BD? Literally just straight BD. 360. Yeah, yeah, straight in BD oh, grim, on the phones on my first day, first afternoon. 
I remember like, um, so I had this a client I was calling and I'd literally call in the switchboard and, she, and she was, my boss was like, now find out uh, who, who their boss is and find out who their boss is and tell me. And I literally called this company about, about 12. <laughs> but it was great. Do you know what? It was so, so Perfect good. Grounding. Oh, 100%. Throw in the deep end. And that's, that would always be my sort of advice to people. Like mm. just throw in the deep end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay to muck up. So it's okay to fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's a really important lesson that I learned because mm. I think I've seen so many people I've trained and they, they want to make sure the first call is like a perfect yeah, call yeah, yeah. and have that perfect that conversation. But it's not like that at all. Mm. So first few months are tough. Then I landed my first first fee after three months, almost to the day being mm. there, um, which was proper, you know, your boy. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, Champagne, popping yeah, balls, mate. Yeah. I'm a baller. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> or a warm pint Recruit down the road. Mate, yeah. Completed it. Easy. Yeah, exactly. Done. <laughs> no, I'm doing now. All good. And then the next few months were really good and had some traction. But then I had another, like, a, a, like a double dip, like a dip again. And really? um, after about six months, and I was kind of back to the same bit as, as, as kind of month one, month two. Couldn't seem to find candidates. Council dropping out the process. I'm like, well, you know, why would you not go for the role? Yeah. You can get sometimes very emotionally invested in a process. Oh, especially at the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're, you're seeing... Take it personally. Yeah, you really do. And, and, and I did. And I was sort of like, is it me? Is it the job? Yeah. So that was tough. But then I think kind of got to like month nine, month 10. Um, and I started getting a few con sort of consistent months under my belt of, of making fees. And then okay. it was going, yeah, it sort of clicked from there, really. Okay, nice. So... A quick one before we move on from that then, mate. I'll be really curious because it's probably something that you've really had to cultivate throughout your career now. But I guess, how did you, how did you, why did you continue or why did you dig deep? Because I'm sure in those early days, you thought about quitting. Is this for me, right? Yeah. So what, what made you push on, would you say? I think the people Looking around back? me. Really? I think the people around me, they were very supportive and I think they, they very much kind of, said to me, look, this, this is, we've all been there. We've it's all part of the process. Of, yeah, it's part of the so process. So you didn't feel like, oh my God, if I don't, if I do that a lot, I might lose my job. No, like, no, okay. my, my boss was good. She had, she had real patience. I think hopefully she saw some potential in me yeah. and, uh, and invested a lot of time, a lot of effort. And a lot of it was on the job. It wasn't like pulling me off desk and going in a room and training. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. okay, just try that call again or do another call. Yeah. And I think that's the real key thing when you, you know, almost when you fall off your bike, get up again and ride yeah, it. I know yeah. it's cliche, but yeah, it's so no, true. I think it's so true. And I think me looking back as well and why my director continued to push me in the right directions was I, I I was willing to learn, if that makes sense. Like, obviously, very easily you can slip into, I've done a deal, like I know what I'm doing now. Yeah. But do, do you know what I mean? So yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, being willing to get back up but and then having the humility to go, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm still very early yeah. on, still have loads to learn. It's and okay that to helps make mistakes. As well. It's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. Okay, and, that, and that's all part of the learning journey. And I think for me, as I say, I saw people around me that were, were being successful and I thought, I want a piece of that. And yeah. I'm naturally like a competitive guy. Yeah, um, sure. I want to do well in, in you know, sport or my personal life or whatever. Mm. And, and I just felt, well, no, I can't fail at this. I, I don't yeah, want to yeah. fail. Determined. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that's that's That really helps important. as well. Yeah. Okay. So then um, your time there then, what was the sort of route? Did you just continue billing? Did you manage anyone by the time you left? Or what was the, just help me out there. So yeah. what, you, what was the sort of journey in that business? So I, th I think generally the business was, if you, if you build money, you then start having people to yeah. almost take them on that journey with sure. you and then give them jobs and then they start billing and then you get more and more people, yeah. which I don't necessarily would say there's no right or wrong with that, but just because you're a good biller doesn't always make you a good manager. A good builder, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically consultant, build for about 18 months. Then I had a, like a junior sort of resource that worked for me. And then another sort of 12 months, had another headcount come and join. And then it, I think I had about seven people. Really? Time I left. Okay. So yeah. That's really interesting, mate. So then let's, let's unpack that a bit then. Yeah. I'm and then did that follow the same suit when you left internal and went back agency? Did that sort of follow a similar route? The, the speed route? wasn't the same. The growth wasn't the, the same because we were targeting more experienced hires in my last business. Okay. But the first business were kind of like organic growth okay, from cool. graduates upwards. Yeah. All right, cool. So before we get onto that then. Yeah. That's really interesting. So firstly, mate, always like to ask, billings-wise, how did you get on, mate? It seemed like obviously you did all right if you uh, only went that direction. Yeah, year one, I probably did. I was thinking about it on the way in this morning. I probably did about 120 okay. year one. So it was, all, it was all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, bear in mind, that was kind of nine months rather than 12. And then year two, about 150. And then yeah. it kind of incrementally went up from there, and really. continued to go up. Did yeah. you break the 200k mark before you Yeah, I did. That was... 300k mark? That, that was... Yeah. Whoa, here he is. Yeah, I managed to do that by end of year three, which really? is cool. So that was That's some amazing. good people around me. Yeah. And then what was your best year then? Um, just under 400. Okay. Didn't hit the 400 mark. And um, was that in that place? That was in that, yeah. Okay, mate, that, that's, okay, cool. That's interesting. So first thing then, <clears throat> let's just, let's just because you just shared that, let's just talk a bit about your, you looking back now. Yeah. 
how do you think that you continue to go in that direction, if that makes sense, in this first sort of segment of your career? What do you think that was down to? A few key points that you th- that come to mind as to how you got to that point. So I think the first one might sound a bit strange as I was quite selfish, which actually had an adverse effect on me. Mate, that boss. makes complete sense. But then I was a crap boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, not a crap boss, but I wasn't great. Because yeah. I was just like, no, I'm focused on my billing and me developing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And although I was quite good at feeding my team, I perhaps didn't, and I know I didn't give them the attention they needed. And certainly when you're a graduate and mm. I've been there myself and it's quite a lonely place, yeah. I don't think I invested enough time. But yeah, you've got to be selfish. Mm. And, and, and when you say selfish, yeah. what do you mean by that? Selfish in terms of your time. Okay. Whether it's giving to other people, uh, focusing on your own fees, making sure that they are always kind of mm. on target. I think that's that always should be mm. your number one sort of focus, particularly yeah. when you're like a billing. Particularly consultant. when you're just billing. It. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So okay. selfish is, is so really selfish of your time. Yeah, really honed in on on your billings and yeah. uh, okay. Anything else? Some of the cliche ones, but like good work ethic. I mean, mm. you know, no surprise if you're first in the door and last out the door, you're probably going to be mm. one of the top billers in a company. I think generally that's good. Um, I think the main thing for me, my differentiator, and I'll probably talk about a few times, is being authentic. Okay. So authentic with everyone you're interacting, whether it's people around you, whether it's your your, your candidates, your clients, mm. whatever. I think people buy into that. They don't mm. sort of. They can almost smell the sales bullshit that a lot of yeah. recruiters kind of give. Um, so I think if you're authentic and a bit genuine with your candidate, mm. so when did you start realizing that though? Because I feel that obviously that's quite good self awareness to that wasn't in the first job though. No, so really? my, my first job was essentially selfish, billa billa billa, make loads of money, yeah. let my team a bit, sell yeah. them leave, you know, yeah, yeah, sell a V. Yeah. That was the end of my sort of the first part of my sort of agency mm. journey. But I think with the time, it was probably when I was in house yeah. and I was a bit like, okay, I need saw to the other side. Yeah. Of the, okay, cool. All right, cool. So. Next thing then, before we move on to that, because I'd love to get your, your experience on the internal side um, about the managing team thing, because there'll be, there'll be a lot of people listening that um, are good billers or want to become managers or are managers right now and struggling. I mean, you hear all the time, I wasn't a billing manager, but you hear all the time that it's one of the most difficult job yeah. in the recruitment agency, right? <coughs> so knowing what you now know, yeah. looking back, you've already identified that you was very selfish and it was all about you and your time, which meant that your billings didn't dip. Which tip, which led to you yeah. not being a great manager, right? So, <clears throat> how how did you how would you go back and change that now? Do you think? Yeah, it's good. I think I would um, uh, empower them to make more decisions themselves. Nice. It's almost that whole self coaching thing. So yeah. I think sometimes they would come to me with a problem and they already knew the solution. Mm. So you'd almost talk it through with them. And at the time, I would just go and do this, do this, and move on. Crack so you just, so just tell yeah. the answer. It was a tell approach. It was like, this is what you need to do. Go back to yeah. this, do it, and it'll be fine. Like, just do it my way almost. Mm. And, and that's how I, my, my, that was my mentality. Mm. But I think reflecting back on that, I should have empowered them more to make the decisions themselves. And, sure. And, and typically, nine times out of 10, they come to the same conclusion that I would have anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, A, it's, you're being more efficient with your time. And B, they feel self empowered that they've almost yeah. come to And the they're decision not relying on you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't do that until probably later down in my career. And then, and then anything around. I think it's a quite typical thing that people trip up on is that you you have the expectations of the people around you that you have yourself, which Absolutely. isn't. Yeah. Is that fair? Was Absolutely. that a bit? Couldn't agree more. Yeah, I was really? literally like, well, I've done it that way, so you should be able to do it that yeah, way. Yeah, and you approach it that way. Yeah, that was my sort of style. Did you? Was you in charge of hiring for your team? Was you involved in that? I was involved in the process. I mean, ultimately, my my MD, it was her decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we, you know, we absolutely had our views, and, and we were able to sort of be part of that decision making. Yeah. But um, I think for me, I used to look at people, and I still do it today. It's likability. If I like someone, I'm yeah, because I was going to say, what are the core cool things that you look for? I got to like the person. If, yeah. if you like the person, you invest time in them, mm. and if they invest time in them, they're likely to be more successful. So, how do you measure that though in an interview? first five minutes yeah it's a, it's a good point first five minutes can I can I bounce with them do I like them is there yeah. some smiles is there you know a bit of bit of warm bit of charisma a bit of something about them a bit of fire mm. in their belly because as you say it's long hours it's lonely at times yeah. like you've got to have a bit of something about you yeah. and, and listening to you know all the people that have been on your podcast today they've all got something about them they've all yeah, got yeah. character they've all got fire in the belly and you know I think for me that that's the number one can I you like cultivate them. that in some way um, I think it's just, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I think you've liked me. It's don't, interesting, right? isn't it? Yeah. I, I, personally, but I, I mean, if you see that far in their belly, or whatever, like, yeah, can you cultivate that? Yeah, I mean, there's been people, um, <laughs> without mentioning names, that I've managed that perhaps when I first met them, I've been a bit like, I see something in you. I wouldn't necessarily yeah. be the first person I go for a beer with at the pub, but I see yeah. something in you, and, and I've within reason I've been able to sort of manage that. You know mm. how you communicate with clients, how you send emails to people, how you can come come across in the office. I think to a degree you can, but yeah, yeah, yeah. people okay. are people. 
before we move on then, just mm. to help me out. So when after you went internal yeah. and agency and even more now starting your own business, have you um have you had to obviously ultimately build up your market from scratch or yeah. pretty much, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so let we'll touch on that in a bit then, because uh, that is everyone wants to know about that, right? Yeah, yeah. So you've done that when you obviously got in that role. Uh, when you went agency again and now obviously in your own business because yep. of restricted covenant stuff like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Why did you go internal? I'd fall out of love with agency. What did you fall out of love with? I, I, I was, uh, I just thought that, and and being honest with you, like I just thought every every agency was the same. Really? It was just it, transactional. It got to the point where everyone was just, you know, organically growing, graduates, hires and stuff like that. And, and not, not, not knocking it, it's a good approach. But yeah. I think for me, I, I just I just fall out of love. I'd burnt myself out, to be honest with you. It wasn't necessarily my business's fault. I'd burnt myself out. I'd what do you mean by that? Just, I'd done so, like, I'd burn the can at both ends, as I really? used to say. Like, I'd just literally be, I'd be in the office, like, eight o'clock in the morning, half seven, whatever. I'd be leaving at seven, seven thirty at night. Really? Going for beers or, like, trying to socialize with clients. And I wouldn't be getting in until, like, half ten, eleven. I was doing that almost every night. Mate, that's grim, mate. Awful. When did you burn out? Um, was there a particular when, I, when I resigned? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, was like, I'm done. No, I, really? I yeah. but was there a moment yeah, yeah. because I think that's let's talk about that. I yeah, mean, yeah. obviously, uh, you said earlier that you was listening to Ross's journey, and yeah, obviously, he didn't talk about burnout, he had a real traumatic experience which he had to deal with that led to obviously the catalyst of mental health, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but being I, I'll be honest, like me starting my own business, also can relate, like, I'm already aware of that, yeah. like, it's just me, it's just you at the moment, yeah. like, it's like it's. It's so easy to say yes to stuff and get into a habit. Yeah. Like you got to be. I'm already aware of like. Well, no, I need to make sure that I have enough time with my girlfriend. I need to make yeah. sure I have enough time to exercise. Like that's definitely been my biggest challenge already. Like four months in. Like definitely in terms of health, going gym and stuff. That's definitely slats because it's the the obviously pendulum has gone way towards business. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So like. What, so like, <clears throat> was that just a constant build up of you just having those habits and that routine? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I I, I love my football. I play it, watch it, read about it, whatever. Yeah. And and I used to I played for a team. And and to be honest, you, that was a point where I kind of neglected that as well. Yeah. Because I was doing such long hours, I wasn't able yeah, to go training, yeah. and then I wasn't playing. So all of a sudden, the balance cycle. of life. Yeah. Was so lent towards work. Yeah, absolutely. And I yeah. just felt I couldn't really escape from it. And the problem is, when you set a bar high, yeah, you 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 kind of it's a double-edged sword because you want to keep continue yeah, that yeah, and yeah. continue pushing because they're the hours you've done and you've almost set yourself an expectation in the office mm. like my boss kind of presumed that's what I was doing and and it just gets to the point where you know your team expecting you yeah. to do those hours and you just got to the point where I was just like I'm done with this I yeah. need to and I just thought the grass was greener and doing house and and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and almost get a bit so of it was it literally just a moment where you're like I'm done yeah I, I was I was <laughs> I was at an event in London. I vividly remember yeah. where I was. It's was Christmas, and I was, there was, it was like a networking event thing. It was it was really cool, really good event, and um and I just got to even and I I just remember turning around to someone. I was just like I need to I need to have a break or do something, and then um and that was it. And then I went really? internal and um, made the decision. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, which but happens a lot. You see it a lot. Yeah, yeah. And w just to be clear on that before mm. we move on to that, because I think it's interesting. Like, what was you trying to escape from? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What was you trying to get out of? It was almost the pressure I'd almost put on myself. Yeah. By being in that environment. That's that's interesting. It wasn't necessarily my bo like my boss. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. Like she wasn't. Going, you made. You yeah. chose to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So so I guess you you must have thought then at that point, if I'm going to stay in this, then it means that I have to put these outputs yeah. to get the yeah the returns that I want. And in my head, I was. And you're like, so, no, I can't do that. Yeah. This isn't sustainable. In my head, 25 years old. Just, just got a mortgage as well, so putting that, yeah. that, that sort of chain around your neck as well, that yeah. pressure. And I just thought, no, I, I need to, I need to do something different. And actually, agency, uh, sorry, in house, would give an opportunity to have more work life balance. And my mm. perception at the time was very much a nine to five job, which, yeah, it <laughs> turned out not to be. But yeah, okay, no, thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah, That's yeah. really interesting. Okay, so how long was you in in house recruitment for? For just over a year. And was it one of your clients? Uh, yeah, uh, no, the first one was an old, uh, internal recruitment, uh, lady that went in house, okay. um, and, or went to this new company, sorry. And, uh, and the other one, um, she was at, yeah, she was at Coca-Cola. She yeah. joined Coke. So that was it. Okay. So, and then you worked for Coca-Cola? Yeah, I worked for Coca-Cola. Yeah. Okay. So as an internal recruiter then, yeah. your role was to what? <laughs> well, I initially went in there to run uh, what's called group functions. So it was okay. like HR, IT, all the central stuff. But within a few months, um, the person that was running the procurement supply chain had left the business. So uh, guess what? The person that knew procurement supply chain background. So I got sort of put with 
pretty much everything apart from marketing that I was running. So you had to fill all the vacancies yeah. and that? Yeah, I had a team. Business. I had a really good team that worked for me. I was really lucky. How big was the team? Uh, there was three of them that okay, worked cool. there. So they, they were really good. Um, and then someone came in, picked up the group functions, then I ran with procurement supply chain yeah. solely because it wasn't management doing, obviously, pretty much everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I did that for 12 months. So let's just go over the highlights of that. I'd love to know, obviously, I feel like the majority of the people listening will be agency. Yep. Um, how was it sitting in Coca-Cola's office, the, the business that you work for, you got your salary, mm -hmm. but firstly, was there any incentive for you to fill these vacancies at all? Was there a bonus scheme? In no. There? Nothing. It was, it was your base salary. There was a, it was a, a yearly bonus, bonus but that wasn't, bonus. that wasn't Predicated really geared on, on how many people. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what was the actual experience? Tell us a bit about the experience. Like, what was it like being in the business that you worked for, blah, blah, blah. Like, what just... What was the sort of overall experience, would you say? How would you describe it? Look, I met some amazing people. Mm. One, one thing I, I kind of learned there, I, mean, I learned so much there, but one thing I learned there is brand loyalty. Like, I saw so many people that have almost sort of man and boy or girl and woman, like just been Coke people for years and years yeah. and years, just developed through it's the power of brand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they were there for the brand. They were there for the love of the job. Yeah. And there were so many people like that that I learned so much from and I've got a lot of respect for them. Yeah, um, yeah. That's interesting in the site. Yeah, but I think, I think in terms of, it's definitely not a nine to five job. Case yeah, yeah. Um, people think that um, so you have to put the hours in it's the same amount of graft and stuff but I kind of describe it as you and bear with you on this thought but like you're using your brain a lot when you're in house mm. so when you're an agency recruiter it's all around emotional intelligence it's all around that body language mm. communication style people buying into people that's it that's sales mm. when you're in house you're actually that that's not what it's about it's much more around kind of strategic visions that's and setting it. up strategies and you know, what's your USP? What's your branding going to be when you go mm. out to graduate fairs? Um, you know, what kind of talent attraction tools are you going to use to get people into the business? Yeah. It was much more geared around that. That's interesting. Um, and, and that's great. How did that impact then the recruiting? You didn't recruit as much. That was the challenge. Yeah. So my, my biggest sort of frustration was when you're an mm. internal recruiter, not in all, obviously all, all cases, but in my case, I was focusing so much of my time on, almost without having meetings about meetings, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, having yeah, that yeah, sort of yeah. approach. And I, there were so many times where I would be literally sat in a room, amazing stuff, talking about, you know, graduate scheme strategy or, yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. it may be. Um, but I wasn't doing, I wasn't going out there and recruiting the people. Mm. And I'm sitting there going, well, I've got 25 vacant, list of 25 vacancies and all the hiring managers knocking on the door. I was going to say, who was you then getting pressure from? The, well, the hiring they walked the past my man. desk. And that's, that's the biggest key. When you're an agency, you can hide behind, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, it's gone, it's gone directly or it's gone for another agency or whatever. But when you're, when you're internal, they're there, you're accountable. You can't just yeah. go, oh, well, another agency will fill it. Mm. You've got to fill the role because they're walking past your desk every day going, I haven't got any CVs, yeah. Martin, what's going on? And how did it feel making placements but not getting a fee? Yeah, that that was the realisation. And, and, <laughs> and I, 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 I must I, be I, tough, mate. It, it, is, it was tough. It was tough, particularly when I was doing the more senior end of, yeah. of supply chain and procurement, which obviously a big you know, six-figure salary roles. So really, really great people that I, I hired in there mm. and, and, and a lot of them are still there, which is awesome. But yeah, there was no monetary was value hard. from it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was really tough. And that was, I seem to have these like re realisation moments, but like I was, uh, I was up in the, they've got a site up in Morpeth, yeah. um, which is, a, is uh, it's up in Newcastle. Oh, right, so okay. I'm, I'm from, uh, my family from the Northeast. Oh, right, okay. And Morpeth is like a really sleepy part of, um, up in the North of England. Yeah. And I remember hiring the new supply chain director, yeah. really like really charismatic, lovely lady. She was fantastic. And I remember I got on the train on the way back and I was working out what the fee would have been if I delivered it at an agency. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, that was the moment. Good and that was do. my moment. I thought I could have made it. Well, that, no. And I, I kn that's when I knew this yeah. isn't for me. I, can't, I shouldn't be calculating what yeah, fee yeah, if you're Because you don't that. do it for that. You don't do it for the money. Money's yeah, yeah, a byproduct yeah, yeah. when you're internal. Yeah. You're doing it for the passion of working for the brand. Yeah. And, and that wasn't my... So, yeah. quick one before we move on. Yeah, yeah. you said it a few times now and, and I like it. What, where's this sort of decision making come from because like I'm, I'm quite the same yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you seems like you've, you've had like you've got to a point realise something and then check and then you're like right I'm yeah. taking action have you Just, always been like that yeah if I realise something it then kicks into my gut and really? my gut says I'm like, I've got to, I've got yeah, to do it yeah yeah yeah, and that's been, I guess, thinking about it, that's been my thought process throughout my yeah, career. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no, I can just really relate with that because that's definitely how I got to this point. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%, just yeah. complete gut instincts and making a decision yeah. and just thinking what's the worst that can happen. Yeah, but, um, it was, it, but you know, with Co, it was an amazing experience. The yeah. people there were fantastic, learned a lot. Yeah, yeah, so to round that up then, mm. anyone listening right now, agency who's thinking, is a grass greener? There's businesses now where you can work for an agency and then three days you're on site, internal. 
have more impact on the talent strategy, da, 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 all, the, all these things now, which is really exciting, right? Yeah. But from your experience, how would you, what, would peop- what should people think about coming from agency side, like you have, going into internal role, what should they be thinking about that you maybe didn't know before you got in there and now know sort of thing? So I think the variety. Okay. When you're an agency recruiter, obviously you've got more mm. than one client, so you've got a variety. Don't take that for granted. granted. No, absolutely, don't yeah. take that for granted. Um, I think in t- I think if you're if money is one of your number one drivers, mm. don't do internal. Yeah. If, you, you know, you get a solid salary, you get a higher basic salary likelihood than agency, but don't don't do it for the monetary reasons. Mm-hmm. You're doing it to maybe go into a different career. Maybe you want interest in going into HR. That's yeah. a great avenue for a lot of internal recruiters to go yeah. down. Um, so I think if you're a very money driven person, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you that. Might, you you more. There's a very good chance you're going to experience that moment where you're like, yeah. Oh my god, the fee could have been yeah. X. I've just hired like 10, 100k people into this business. Yeah. So I would have made X amount yeah. of commission. And, yeah. And I haven't got that. If and that's if you're thinking. if you're thinking of that when you're in that role, you're in trouble. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so listen yeah. to that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. You're doing it through. Reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so variety. If you're really driven by money, think twice about it. Really understand what you're getting in for. Blah blah blah. Um, it is a good avenue to potentially get in HR or other avenues, and maybe it's the talent strategy that you want to get yeah. involved in stuff like that. Is that fair? Anything yeah. else or is that? Um, I, I think there's a there's a preconception that they seem like are the gatekeepers, and, and I think that's a really unfair. Like you, you hear some people say about, oh, they're like failed recruiters when they're in house. Yeah, yeah. But again, that I think that's a, a really unfair label. Some of the majority of the best recruiters, not not all obviously, but majority of some of the best recruiters I've ever known have been like internal people. And also, I think the other thing as well is sometimes people think, oh, the pace is different. Like agency pace is, is, is yeah. everything, right? But you can also work in lots. There's lots of clients that I represent now where I'm working with their internal recruiter. And they've got no, real no. pace for what they yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, yeah. sorry. Final thing, actually, before I forget. Yeah, yeah. How how then was your experience with agency recruiters? That's obviously always interesting. I I, I spoke to some yeah. ladies recently from Trapeze and asked them what's the typical thing that a recruitment uh, recruitment consultant would just do wrong or just do to piss off the internal. Do you know what I mean? Like what what that must have been interesting. So what was the insight there now being on the other side of the fence and going, oh my God, like this is bad or what? do you know what I mean? I got quite a few LinkedIn messages from uh, some of my competition agency going, really? oh shit, you're in house. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you know what? And that was one of the things when I, when I was on that train thinking about actually, is this for me? That was one of the things that was going through my head because I must admit my experience when I was in house of the agencies, some of the agencies, not all, sorry, some of the agencies I was partnering with weren't great. Right? They were that very stereotypical throw CVs at the wall, see what can stick. Really, it was that. It was, was very say, transactional. Me, what does that mean? It was really that. It was quite transactional. They were just, you know, I'd, I'd go on briefing calls, um, not all the time again, but go on briefing calls sometimes. Um, and I knew that the hiring manager is looking for that pink elephant. You know, it looks like it doesn't yeah. exist. Um, and then the agencies would all go, yeah, yeah, no that's fine. That. And then there's in the call, I'm thinking, guys, we're looking to pay peanuts for something that is, it's not realistic. And I'd, really empower yeah. them to kind of you know push back a little push bit back, and they never yeah. did so i think that whole con- consultative approach mm. which you know i'm a big champion of i, I didn't really see that a lot really? so again i kind of thought oh, i could do that better and i know that sounds a bit arrogant but i just thought no, 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 I, I can do something that i don't think a lot of the people could do what, so. what was your worst experience <laughs> don't have to name any names but what, no, spring, I don't think I what, what springs to mind like what was the worst thing you like oh my god is this actually real so they, so, oh my God, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can tell you a story. So, <laughs> so there was a, um, so it was a procurement role, which obviously yeah. I wasn't, I didn't go out to agency because yeah. I like to think I kind of knew what I was doing. And, um, and they'd contacted me and I'd said, thanks, like, but no thanks at the moment, yeah. keep in touch, da, da, da. Then they'd contacted the line manager. Yeah. Then they contacted his boss. Yeah. Then they'd contacted HR. Yeah. Then they had sent a CV of someone that used to work at, at the business. Mm to them, to the hiring manager. Mm. So they, they despectfully sent the CV or someone that worked at their business a few years ago. Then they co- then I contact them saying, don't do that. And they said, oh, I, did, I didn't send any emails. So I then had to forward the email to them saying, you did oh, and here's yeah. this. And also they used to work here. So it was just like, what are you doing? What like, just hell? not the way. And that's and, and you, you do take a lot of lesson from that. I'm quite lucky, I guess, in terms of a, a USP that because I've been in house, yeah, I kind of get it. Yeah. You've got to be, again, talking about authentic, but you've got to be a bit real with them yeah. because there's no point in them saying thanks, but no thanks. And you just start spamming the CVs because yeah, you're yeah. never going to get anywhere. So to sum that up then, that's really yeah. interesting. What should a recruiter right now not do? to piss off an internal recruiter? Like, what should they not be doing? Do you know, as a minute, like, what should they stay clear of? What? Spamming CVs in. Really? The line. That's the most common thing that yeah. people do? Yeah, 100%. Because really? you're, just, you're just like every other recruiter. Yeah. 
so I think it's trying to position it another way. It's, it's the whole active listening piece, which I always encourage my team to do is actually listen to what they're saying. You know, I always, when I started out and stuff, I always remember the internal recruiters or even the line managers say, call me in a week. And I'd literally dire eyes a call yeah, and, uh, at 9.30. Follow up. Follow up. I know it sounds really basic, but literally. No, yeah. Quite a few people have said that. And then they hit a voicemail and then, okay, when can I call you? Next Tuesday. Yeah, just keep yeah. following it. And so eventually it's, they'll... No, it's really interesting you say that because the ladies at Trapeze sort of say the same thing. And mm. would, would you say then to people that are really, the, the internal recruiter is the key to everything they say. They, the line manager might really rate you, but they're like, sorry, like you just have, this is our process, have to respect it. Would you really advise recruiters then to really keep gunning and getting that opportunity to speak to the internal recruiter rather than just keep trying to hit them with CVs, blah, 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 but always try and drive towards that opportunity where they can build a bit of a relationship or they can speak to them rather than keep trying to hit them with relevant CVs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I do, yeah, I, I do a two-prong attack. At the end of the day, the internal re- recruiter are going to be the gatekeepers. They're going to be the one that runs that, that, yeah. that contract, that PSL. Yeah. So there's no point antagonizing them. Yeah. If you're relying on purely growing your business through working with internal recruiters, that's probably not going to give you as much fruition as yeah, yeah. still engaging with, yeah. in my case, like the procurement directors yeah. or, or HR directors or whatever. So I think almost do it as a two-pronged attack, but nice. respect the internal recruiters and then come back to the line managers with something, not just who's a CV for you. It's a, you know, I'm doing a, a podcast series or a leadership event, or I'd be interested to get your thoughts on on whatever yeah, in, yeah, in the political different. landscape just just come into it a di- bit different because yeah. you got to appreciate from an internal speaking from an internal perspective you know every agency will come to you with CVs and Very just throw thing, stuff yeah, at yeah. you so you got to try and think so about true. doing something different before you go at it yeah, yeah. everyone's just going to do the same thing no I think a two prong attack makes sense doesn't it I think it's respect the process yeah. respect everyone involved and I think really focus on yeah delivering value not just looking like anyone else and i think really if you if you get that hiring manager to speak about you in the right way because you've followed up you've spoken about industry things you haven't just wasted their time you haven't irritated them and you've got that person then speaking internally highly of you that's only going to benefit then yeah. internally do, do you know what i mean that makes yeah. sense doesn't it yeah absolutely um cool so then on the back obviously your train journey i see it i'm going back agency i want to make some more money yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> so okay and then, and then you did that for four, uh, how long? Four and a half years, yeah. And then to just frame up the journey it's back into the same market. Yeah, back um, into the and then, chain, yeah. So then you joined as a consultant, I'm assuming. Uh, no, I joined, as a, so I joined as a senior manager. So okay. um, the, the business was, was, was one. Um, so the MD and, and owner of the organization. Oh, okay. So um, quite a small business. Yeah, oh, uh, wow. they, they had a, a sister brand that did um, HR recruitment and and the lady that ran that was a phenomenal recruiter, yeah. uh, is a phenomenal recruiter. And uh, yeah, so it was just, just the two of us and um, we kind of built it out from there. So brought in all my kind of relationships that I'd had and, and you know, dusting off the, the book from sort of a year or two ago and, and developed from there and, and grew it. So um, okay. that was what really interesting. Uh, we got to about 10 by the time I left. Really? So from two of us, and we how had... How many in your... Um, so I, 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 I kind of managed what I managed three or four people of that. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. And then, and then th- did you some, uh, follow a similar path in terms of billing performance or how did that go? Yeah. Um, yeah, ish. I uh, sort of, yeah, year, year, year one was like steady because I was sort of growing a market that wasn't there, yeah. um, which had its challenges, but yeah, year two, three and four were, were great. It was really good. Yeah. Really happy with that. Did you do more than 400? No, no, no. I didn't sadly. Uh, okay. So, yeah, no, but yeah, it was good. No, that, that's really interesting. So, I think the key thing that I'd love to talk about there, <clears throat> and then, sorry, so then obviously then you left there to start your own business, obviously a few months in now, and then even in your business now, you've had to again build up yeah. a, a business straight desk. New clients. Clients, yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah, absolutely. How have you, okay, cool, let's talk about that. How have you typically done that then? If you've, if you've had to do that after the internal piece, you're doing that now. You can talk about how you've done it now if you want, but how have you typically focused on building a desk, building a team? Da, da, da. How have you d- talked to me about that? So I, th- I think a lot of it comes from the, the candidate like journey, okay. essentially. Okay. So a lot of people that I now work with were people that in, in procurement language were like buyers, you know, back in 2009 when I started okay. out. So I started on their journey then and I followed them through. Because I think mm. a lot of recruiters would just look at a, a candidate as a commodity. Mm. Are they good for that role or not? And then mm. 
you know, kind of got long term mindset. Yeah, exactly. So it's the it's the long term piece for me, which I think is really key. So if I look now at a lot of the the clients that I work with and have worked with in the last few years, these are all people, majority of which that, as I say, they were buyers, they were senior buyers, yeah. they just started out as hiring managers. And I always say to my team, the barometer of success isn't making the fee; it's that person will come to you as the first point of contact, either they're hiring or if they're looking. Mm, and that's such the basis, a good thing to measure. And that's the basis of what of what I measure success on. So I think for me, a lot of it was, as I say, really good candidates that I'd keep in touch with and network with, and continue that relationship going. And, and that was the core of my kind of business development. Mm. And I still, you still have to do, I mean, certainly in the last six months, like job spotting and yeah. chasing leads up and stuff like that. But it's it's building that relationship with candidates and, and trying to find a solution to what they're doing. And was you aware that you was doing this early on? Do you know what I mean? No, I wasn't. No. So I, when did you really double down on that? I think it was probably when, yeah, it was probably about two, three years in when I won a, a really big contract um, with with a retail business yeah. and uh, got all the, all the jobs. It was amazing. And it was purely from like hiring like a, a 40K sort of senior buyer into their business. So, and they were like, brilliant, you can do you can do everything. And I was like, why? You and did like, that so well. Well, because the internal recruitment was like, we got feedback from the candidate about the experience and it was great and da, da, da. And we haven't had that before. Cause, mm. and, and even like really basic things like I met all my candidates so like the other agencies just never met their candidates and you mm. did that and you took them for coffee and you ran them through the recruitment process and you were there at the end of the phone it sounds really simple people listening to this going that's obvious but not a lot of people amazing how many people don't do it yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and that was a differentiator and that allowed me to build it and then I kind of self-reflected and probably another train journey mm. and, and realized that uh, actually kind of candidate is king and that's that's the way I'm going to develop a business and, mm. and that's what I've continued so, to do so, so anyone listening right now how can they start how can they start approaching it this way do you know what I mean because there's a lot of impatient people out there yeah. they, they've got their managers going I need you to get on the phone more I need you to win more clients blah 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 yeah. but how can how can they start cultivating this because clearly where you are now starting your own business it's clearly paid off for you like how did you go about making sure that you, your team, made sure that the candidate experience was on point and, and started to really double down and, and cultivate that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Meet your candidates. That's okay. definitely the first thing. Where, where, where possible, I appreciate it for those listening that have got international markets and they're based in, in London, wherever they can yeah, also be technology challenged. now, video yeah, call, Skype, it's still exactly. personable. Yeah, yeah, have, have, that, have that FaceTime with them, mm. you know, whether it's, uh, as you say, a video or face-to-face, yeah. like meet your candidates. And I, I used to say to my team, find your top 10, top 10 candidates that you're currently working with that realistically are going to make the business money you know people that okay. are gonna your clients are going to be interested in and obsess over them relate to them find ways to support them as i say it's not just about the transaction about the recruitment is there a network event you know even when i first started i always remember when i first started in, in my last business i actually sent a link to a job i didn't even have on to a senior guy and he got the job uh, so i didn't make the fee yeah. but because i'd given him that why did you do that because i long-term game Mm. And now we, and then he became one of my my, my biggest customers <laughs> because I'd given him that tip <laughs> in. It's mad, isn't it? So I hadn't won, I hadn't made the you know the yeah, fifteen yeah. grand fee, whatever it was, eighteen grand fee. I'd supported in that sort of indirectly, and he really respected me for doing that. Mm. Again, it's about being different, and that, I think that's the real key thing for me. Did you have challenges like that story, for example? Like, did you have challenges internally approaching it that way? No, not at all. My last really? business were amazing. At that and actually, that was one of my big learns. If I look at my first business I worked for yeah. and the last business. My last MD would really empower me to do that. He used to talk about being authentic, which is what I said earlier, and be a bit genuine with people. Don't just think about the fee. Think about the big picture. Mm. And that was a real, real big learn. It's just interesting that because I'm just thinking like people listening, if they told their manager that, they'd be like, mate, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But then there's that, there's got to be that internal selling piece, isn't it? Like, it's, well, hang on a minute. This is what I'm, I am serious about building a long-term recruitment desk. Yeah. I do want to achieve that go-to person, go-to, and that does involve paying forward and it does involve doing it like being genuine authentic do you know what i mean it's the, it's the long it's the long yeah you're so right it's the long-term vision of it like ultimately you can transact you know find a candidate mm. place in a job that's no but if you want to be a little bit strategic a bit more innovative and a bit more authentic about it yeah that's the way to do it it's actually i haven't got this job on but i've seen this job in wherever would you be interested yeah they're going to be like jesus this guy's like that's really that's nice that's genuine yeah, yeah, yeah and that yeah. really that really gets people to to draw to you and that's why you know, you get that repeat business back and, and that's how you build a desk and then mm. they refer you to friends and, and the word of mouth, right? It doesn't matter what sales environment you're in. No, that's powerful. It's so powerful. And that's that's how I managed to build the market because they would go, you need to talk to Martin Smith, like you mm. talk to their business and, and it just sort of snowball effect from there because senior people interact with senior people. Yeah, and then, yeah. especially at a senior level. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. Um, 
so before before we go on to um, you starting your own business and, and that, that journey so far, um, authentic, right? You said it quite a few times. What does that actually mean? <laughs> Genuine, yeah. real, uh, real with people, mm. honest, you know, transparent. Being yourself. Being yourself, that's it. Like for, for me... I don't know. I, I've seen it in businesses where people have tried to be someone else. And the best, mm. one of the best bits of best advice I ever got was in the first business. And uh, one of the senior people came out to me and said, don't try and be, you know, that person or that person. Pick bits from different people that you like and then create your own create identity. Your own, yeah. and, and that's so important. So I think for me, being authentic with people, just make, you get better engagement, I think. So just be real. Be honest with them. If you haven't got any jobs for them. I haven't got any jobs. Don't say you're going to call them a week because the likelihood yeah. is you can't find the job for them. Mm. Or if they're right in the center of the, of, of the location that you recruit in and tell them you'll call them in a week's time. Tell them you, you work with X, Y, and Z yeah. clients. Tell them that they're not hiring at the moment, but they might hire in two months. Set the expectation of the candidate. And again, they'll, they'll value that. How, how did you start getting your team then? And how did you start getting your team to be more authentic? So I think it, I think it came down to being realistic with them on the phone and managing expectations. Really? Um, I think it's a, as I say, it's a case of you know you get a good candidate in your location, tell them you've got some potential really good jobs for them, or if they're you know recruiting in from Qatar and you're not yeah, hiring out in Qatar, you, you, you're not going to be able to fill the roles or support them with recruitment. So I think that's the first thing. As I say, go meet them, go and understand their needs, mm. um, and just just try and relate to them. Like find some commonalities because in the day it's people dealing with people. Yeah. And I've heard it a few times on the podcast, like recruitment isn't rocket science. It's yeah. about interacting with people. People buy into people. And I think that's, that's what you do. Mm, okay. Have you always wanted to start your own business? It's always been the back of my head. It's always been an itch, I think, for Is me. Um, and how many months are you in now? Uh, so just come up to six months in okay. November. So I, yeah, it was something that I'd always thought of doing, but probably been a bit scared to do. And then- Why were you scared? risk you know yeah. I get, it's your head it's you know it's, yeah. i guess it's everything you're generating it's it's it's, it's to keep you and going it's just you on your own right now, and it's yeah. just me on my own right now how have you found it being on your own lonely really? <laughs> yeah. great to talk to someone today. <laughs> no it's not uh, honestly yeah be, yeah i mean yeah i will i i my clients now i'll be honest probably like a third of the people are one-man bands and wanting to grow their business and <clears throat> i've said it a few times but there's quite a few stats out there to back up that 80% of the recruitment industry employ under 10 staff, right? So how how have you actually found that being on your own? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. have you worked so you work from home, you tell me, yeah? Work at home and then there's a, an office share I do quite okay. close to where I live. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, so how have you found those six months being on your own? So yeah, um, so I, th I think it's about self-motivation. Mm. I, I think you just gotta try and surround yourself with good people. Okay. Um, they don't have to be directly recruiters, just good people. And mm. that's family and that's friends bouncing ideas off people because when you you know when you want to celebrate success it's important to bounce that yeah, and yeah. similarly when you're having a, a rubbish day and you're, you're struggling you need to bounce that off yeah. so i think i think self-motivation is the biggest thing to try and get really? over when you're starting your own because no, like yeah there's i mean you're not answering to anyone are well, you? yeah you're not answering anyone which gives you freedom but also that lack of accountability is quite yeah. strange at times yeah so i think how you, do you self-motivate yourself then so I, I get to little benchmarks in the day and, and this is this Go I've, I've got this like whiteboard at home and I'll be like, right, okay, if I can make X amount of calls this morning, yeah, I'll like, I'll make myself a nice coffee and then that'll be like <laughs> a ten minute break. I always like reward, reward myself for the little, <laughs> little things that I kinda do in the day and I've had a good conversation, so I'm right, cool. And um yeah, it was really weird when I got my first like fee in on my own. It was just mm. me and I just sat at home and the girlfriend was at work and whatever and I was just like, Yeah, that's awesome. What'd you do? And and look, so I literally, I called my dad and I was like, dad, I've got this thing. And he's oh. like, yeah, I don't care. I'm in the garden or like whatever. Oh. I was like, okay, cool. Call me later. And, and, that, and that was it. And then to be fair, he, he did say like, well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, dad, a whole but yeah, no. So, um, and then, yeah, then I sort of bounced ideas from people and I, I quickly got involved in some like peer to peer groups, some recruitment kind of networking things that I found really valuable. What one did you go? What one? Um, so there's a, there's one local to me called Evolve. Okay. Um, and there's what also that? recruitment what? leaders in London, elite yeah. leaders, sorry, in London. Yeah. So um, what, what does that actually involve? Just for people, because I, I, yeah. I recommend this to quite a few people. Yeah. Just because I've, I've been to a few different ones. Um, and yeah, I think especially for people like you, it's a great opportunity to meet other people. And yeah. so like, how, what is that, why has that been a benefit to you? Just so like peer to peer groups, like bouncing ideas from people yeah. and, and almost sense checking. I'm thinking about doing this. Is yeah. that, am I crazy or is that a good idea? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and just almost having that litmus test of, that sounds good, Martin. Or no, that's ridiculous. Mm. Don't do that. But I think I really value that. And and I've, do you know what? When you start on your own, you really show. There's people really come out of the woodwork that have shown real generosity to me. That have actually been 
competitors of mine before and I've been on yeah. agency so people tours have been really willing to help yeah absolutely how, how can I help and like good for you start on your own all that like it, I've been really yeah. overwhelmed no, to be that. fair I, I've probably experienced the same have you yeah I think yeah I think I think particularly on um, LinkedIn like I think it's such a unique platform that generally people are willing to help yeah like that's like no BS. Like yeah. if you like if you went on tomorrow and put a post that my girlfriend is in this position right now, but wants to do this and needs help, like you're gonna get help. Yeah. Even if that's like, it's just I think it's such a unique place for people that are willing to do that, which yeah. I think is really cool about it. Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge for you? Um, probably the self motivation. Mm. I, I, I've as I say I've counted it within reason with like networking groups but i think there's still days say when the summer and like mm. england cricket on or there's, yeah. there's football on or whatever and it's the temptation just to sit outside and enjoy that um so i think self-motivation has been the biggest challenge when it's just me um and appreciating the people that i'm calling i've got day jobs and other things to, to worry about yeah um but yeah I'd so say. what have you got mentors or have you got anyone holding you accountable or? yeah yeah so i've I've been quite fortunate a couple of people that kind of mentor me and and again i sort of bounce ideas and what's them. that done for you I think it's just give me the belief. Really? I know that might sound a bit cheesy, mm. but it's give me the belief that I actually do know what I'm doing and I can do that. And they've been in that situation mm. as well. It's a bit like what I was saying earlier, when you, when you start out and you're, you're kind of picking up ideas and experience from other people that yeah. say, oh, I've been there. And it's the same when you run your own business. I think having that reassurance from people saying, look, I've been there. I've been days yeah. where I'm like, get, need to get that fee in because I need you know the mortgage being paid and whatever. Like yeah. I've been there. And I think that really allows you to do it. And and obviously once you start getting fees in, it snowballs. And then every time I've managed to deliver something, I've had more confidence and gone, okay, I yeah, can do yeah, this on my own. Because I've been, you know, I've been recruiting the same discipline for nearly 10 yeah. years. Like I know how to recruit people, but it's very different when you're running your own business. How, and How long did it take you to get that first deal? Um, do you know what? I actually was really lucky. I had a, I won a retained assignment. Really? And managed to deliver that uh, in within sort of the first three or four weeks. I think How much was. retained did you do? Uh, it was like a 25K retained. So it just kept me like breathing. Yeah, that's decent. A good but how much retained did you do as a business? That was the only, that was the only thing. Oh, really? The rest of it was contingent, yeah. So I thought, hey, this is great. Everything I'm going to work did on. Did you pitch that thing. purposely? Yeah, I, I pitched it purposely. Talk to me. <laughs> I'd, I'd known them years ago, so okay. I hadn't dealt with them recently. I'd known them years ago, and um, it was just really good timing that they'd gone into a new business, and um, and I just sort of... What was the pitch? Like, why why would they why would they pay retained rather than contingent? Well, they didn't have an internal recruiter okay. to say, no, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah of course, of course. Um, so they were quite an immature function, which I think sometimes can allow you to, to nail the retainers a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and I just said, look, I, I played more that like, I'm going to simplify the process. I'm going to help you write the job specs. Mm. I'll come onto site and I'll run the assessment with you. Like, and right. they were like, yeah, awesome. We've only got one HR manager. Like, that'd yeah. be great. So, so you help. pitched it as a dedicated resource. Dedicated resource, obsess over your brand, push all the stuff out on my own advertising boards. Yeah. I'll do all the legwork for you and you just pay it in a lump sum. And, and that, that was really, really great. Yeah, that's great. Say, that kept me, that sort of got me going. The first four weeks. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. It's not well, bad. Well, it, well, it was really good timing as well that they just, as I say, joined this new... Yeah. Uh, and obviously, um, obviously, you have restrictive covenants. So yeah. Like, you've really had to focus on new yeah. prospects and new clients. Yeah. And then, have, how, have, how have you approached that then? Has it been some of the things that you spoke about in terms of trying to leverage your existing relationships? And Well, that's been challenging because I haven't been able to talk to pre existing uh, mm. ex-relationships from client or candidate. So, for me, it's been like, actually, it's been quite fun, though. I, I was talking to someone about it yesterday. Like, it's actually been quite fun for you just to literally go out old school recruitment, like go on the job boards, go and understand, like, you know, I've seen that job now kicking around LinkedIn for two months. Like, can I help you? And, and to honest you, I've been feeding off the dregs a few times with a few mm. things just to try and get some traction. Um, but that's what you've got to do when you so what have you been? what have you been proactive with? Like, what would you say has been the best sort of route to market for you over the, six, over the last six months? Because there'd be a lot of people listening that yeah. might have just started out, yeah. thinking about starting out, but thinking how, what can I do in those six months covenants that doesn't involve spending a lot of cash? So I kind of checked, yeah. So I kind of put it, turn it on its head a little bit because ninety nine percent of people are going to, I'm Martin Smith, I'm a special procurement supply chain recruiter, blah blah blah. I can offer you this, this. They're going to get it from every recruiter. Yeah. So I've almost come to them saying, can I find you a solution? So what solution can I offer you? Um, and and you know actually these are people that can maybe save you money because that's what the, the division that I do procurement. That's what they're all about. Mm. So almost positioning it in a slightly different way. I think that was quite good. Or well, with a candidate or with a candidate, yeah. So you you focus on getting a candidate Focus on the candidate and market that. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So okay. again, candidates king, and I I generate some some candidates, some new candidates in, talk to them about the marketplace, and then offer them as a solution to jobs that I had out there. Yeah, but it was sense. another 
numbers game. Like the last six months for me has been a numbers game. There's no, mm. don't get me wrong. There's been nothing particularly strategic or Fair enough. just or, been trying to make, just make been trying happen. to make make stuff happen. Like churn it out. Like get as many sort of good talent that you're working with out there to to clients that you can see are trying to hire. And then it's a numbers game. And then I've had a few that have gone, yeah, cool. Actually, we're struggling. Or and then mm. I've sort of managed to jump on that and and deliver, which is which has been really good. But it's been fun. It's been back to when you I was 21 it. again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and. Um, um, what was I going to say? So <clears throat> what's the, and then is it something that you're looking to, to grow or? Like, yeah, really? yeah, definitely. Like for me, I didn't set up talent drive to be a lifestyle business. Um, yeah. Did you know that from day one? Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I think if I, if I was going to do a lifestyle business, I probably would have carried on on the same route I was doing for another, I don't know, five or yeah. 10 years and, and let that sort of ride and then just done it as a lifestyle with, you know, maybe I don't know, family, kids, whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, as soon as I knew I was going to do it, I wanted to have something that was going to grow quickly and yeah. I could sort of try and try and get to what I wanted to do. So, uh, okay. How have, since starting your own business, oh, I'm always curious about this. I, th I think it's interesting. Like how, how has it been, how have the relationships around you been? If that makes sense. From a, That's a new challenge, right? Yeah. Well, from from like so just for like in general, like friends, relationships, like because again, that's something that people seriously have to think about. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like I've I've had my own. I mean, I'm four months in and I've had my own sort of journey with it. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'd love I'd love <laughs> to hear a bit about that. Like, so I think from a friend's point of view, they've got like I don't know Wolf of Wall Street images, <laughs> the cat bro <laughs> spread, spraying money around the room and like, yeah, you're your own boss. You really? Can, you can bring who you want in and sack who you want and whatever. Yeah. And it's just like, no, also that's not how it works. Yeah. But um, so that's been quite fun. So uh, uh, any of your friends, business owners? Uh, I've got one friend that's a business owner. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and, obviously myself a bit. And, and obviously, yeah, yeah. You, um, <laughs> so so yeah. So he he gave me some he gave me some good advice, but he said just don't don't run too quickly like yeah make sure you do it in a measured way and stuff mm -hmm. like that which which again was was really helpful because he runs his own um, manufacturing company so that that was quite unique to nice. kind of understand that perspective away from recruitment yeah um but again you know it's bouncing ideas off a couple of recruitment owners that were local to me that again gave did me you reached out gave did me you reach out did you know them um i reached out to them both yeah i reached so one was my direct competitor um really so i've done a lot of yeah a lot of agency calls with and stuff and and actually he's one of the people that empowered me to go out and do it he's like so how did you re that's really interesting yeah. How how did you approach that? Was it literally a simple drop to LinkedIn message and say, look? Well, we met a few months before when I was thinking about doing it. Okay. And another conversation. Hit but did you reach out before at that point? Yeah, I reached okay. out at that point. And then I, and then when I said I, I was doing it. I reached out to him again and we and he was great. And he grabbed a coffee and we had a chat. And, and again, that you, you really I was really sort of struck with the kind of the generosity of his time because mm. he didn't have to do that. And, yeah. you know, I'm a competitor and I've been a competitor for so a good few years. So anyone, anyone listening, like, if you think, like, reach, reach out to Oh, them? I couldn't agree. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. Like, what have you got to lose if you're thinking about doing it you know if you're a recruiter wherever you're specializing in and you know you also you're, you should know your competition mm. re and think about setting up your own like reach out to them have some conversations because yeah you'll, you'll be surprised how many people will be happy to invest a bit of time to, to give you, you that wouldn't support. expect that though would you, you? Uh, uh, i was like are you sure like i'm gonna like go after stuff that you're saying yeah it's like yeah you know go and do it like go and yeah I, I've, I've loved it so so yeah i think friends Definitely just thought, yeah, make it rain, yeah, have fun, yeah, like, yeah, do what you want to yeah. do. Um, and I think, uh, actually, I, I did bounce off of, of, of a couple of sort of candidates and people I know as well and think, what do you think about if I did this? And they were like, yeah, go, nice. and, go and do it. So just bouncing off a few people. Um, and the girlfriend just said, as long as the mortgage is covered, then, <laughs> then, then we're okay. How, yeah. has, uh, obviously, and then has, that, has there been any challenges there in terms of like, obviously you said, you said earlier about being burned out stuff like that because now it's like it's just on your shoulders there's even more pressure right so how have you found that do you know what I, I've, I've dedicated now set times in the day where I'll, I'll make sure I'll go to the gym uh, and you okay. were talking about that earlier yeah. with, you know with a, a mental so well-being does that stuff. really help yeah massively H helps your mental well-being like it's so true yeah, like, it's all linked isn't it get, get, you know healthy mind healthy so what, body so what would you block out every uh, lunchtime or? yeah l l lunchtime every day where I can um, and, and actually Friday afternoons I typically finish slightly early and mm -hmm. then I go for a swim and, and go for a jog or do something like that um, so it has making sure that you blocked out exercise yeah. has really helped L literally in, you know in, in my diary in the you know it's one there. hour, it's there every single day. Yeah. You're going to go and do that. That's it. And if clients say, can you speak between that time? I just say, I'll call you after when I'm back. Mm. And it's been so helpful because it just allows me to... And that's non-negotiable. Like, I like that. You just said that. You've got to be disciplined. Because yeah, yeah. always the temptation is, oh, I, I'll give you a quick call and then oh, I'll do that and then I'll do yeah. that. And I'm, I'm, you know I'm prone to that. Really? I yeah. need to be better at that. Because like, I, yeah, I can block in my diary. I like to just get gym done in the morning. Yeah. It's done. 
but yeah, like, if, but if I block someone out, I'm very, I'm more prone to go, yeah, yeah I'll call you then or whatever. But yeah. you do need to be more disciplined, don't you? Say, well, no. Well, that's the thing. And, and you know, first thing in the morning, like before work starts, that's a real key time to do those headhunt calls. And yeah. Talk to clients when they're traveling into work. You tend to get a lot more traction there. So I've almost utilized that time for doing my BD. And then, as I say, by the time lunch goes, because they want to go and have, you know, clients in camp, yeah. go and eat their own lunch and do their own thing. And that's my time as well. So mm. they're doing it. Why shouldn't I? So I think doing that just allows me to have that, you know, de stress and just doing what I need to do. And then, yeah. and then back no, on I like the that. afternoon. And then, how's the, how's the missus been with you? Uh, have you been on the phone a lot in the evening? Have you got the laptop out in the evening? How have you found that? It's LinkedIn app on my phone. That's been Is a nightmare. Because obviously people just be pinging you yeah, at like yeah, yeah. 9, 10, 11, How do you deal with that? Because do you get mine stop bad. Work? Do you get, do yeah. you say, does she say mine stop working? I'm bad. So I used to do the thing, it was like a lamppost where I used to live. And when I'd walk from the station back to my house, I used to say, by the time I get there, I'm not doing any more calls. Yeah. And that, that was my little barometer. Yeah, yeah. But since I moved house and stuff, I've been, yeah, I've been really bad. That's my thing that I've been, really? I wouldn't recommend is, is to say, because you're accessible on LinkedIn all the time. You can ping yeah. people, private messages, whatever. And the temptation just to quickly respond. I'll just yeah. quickly respond. Yeah. So that is bad. And there's been a Something few times where on. she's been like, what are you doing? And you know, the phone's yeah. on at midnight going, oh, I'm just going to quickly reply to this person. So, yeah. yeah. It's hard, isn't it? It's it so is, hard. It's a process. To switch off, particularly when it's your baby, like your yeah, business, yeah, yeah. particularly when it's yours, because it matters more. And actually that drives, that, that definitely yeah. drives people when it's your own thing that you're trying to grow and develop. But yeah, that's the biggest thing you can I fall think there, out I think there's in. always something that you can find to do. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you could finish at six o'clock. Yeah. But you know, you're thinking in your head, I could do that that yeah. night, or I could do that. And then I'll go job spotting in the evening on LinkedIn, I'll click on the job yeah. out, and then I'll just be scrolling through, oh, I'll just quickly apply that, m mention that person, and then yeah. before you know it, your evening's gone. Yeah, no, totally. I think it's a process, something you've got to get better at. But I think for me, what, what has really helped, <clears throat> I'm sure you may have just done this intuitively or whatever, but I've had to like really make sure that, obviously communicate yeah. what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could, I could look at you now, if I'm your missus, and you're on LinkedIn, you're fine, it's like, mine like stop texting like do you know what i mean it's so easy just to associate like you're just sort of scrolling or whatever do you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah. yeah i yeah. think that's what's really helped me in terms of communicating one why i'm doing it like th this is a this isn't us it isn't just a me yeah like this is why do, do you know what i mean yeah that's yeah, really absolutely. helped me personally and I, and I think you know for anyone that's setting up a business it you know to my earlier point it doesn't matter if it's a if it's a lifestyle business that's why you're doing it that's awesome and i know loads of people that make have got great businesses a lifestyle if you want to grow it like but i think before you do it understand the reasons why you're doing it yeah if you're doing it just to be the leonardo DiCaprio making it rain or whatever yeah. like that that that's not that's not a good enough for me anyway that's not mm. a good enough reason like no money i've always had the mentality in recruitment that money is a byproduct of success mm. if you're successful yeah people will pay you good salaries you'll get good commission that's just part of it but if you're purely looking at it as a monetary reason why you're setting up on your own i personally wouldn't set up on your own yeah yeah because those first few months are going to be first few years are hard graft yeah you know you're you're, you're probably not going to pay yourself very much you know overheads aren't too bad depending if you want to get office space but it's a big yeah. investment so no, that, that brings you to the to the next point man, yeah as, as we sort of um come to the end like how how obviously you said about biggest challenge self-motivation and stuff yeah talking a bit about it there so what you're talking about there is the, the resilience piece right yeah how 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 have you cultivated that or What's your relationship with resilience and how have you sort of gone through, as you said, you're fully aware that it's gonna be hard graft, it's tough. So how have you done that or like, do you know what I mean? How have you, what, what do you do to so, help with that? So I, I, I've got this thing in my book where I've almost got like a good thing in the day and the bad thing in the day. So okay, if, something, if something good happens, I'll just do a little asterisk and just make a quick note of it, like a quick one liner, like good call with X, nice. call it next week. And if a, you know, a candidate's turned down a job, I'll be like, okay, that's not great. Yeah. You know, and I just make a list and I don't lose sight of the good. The bad is, is learns, but the stuff that's good is, is How stuff. long have you done that? Um, I, I, used to, I literally started when I set the business up. Really? It's a bit of advice I got from one of these networking groups. They were like, just do it, break down a sort of pros and cons of the day. And it's been so valuable for me. Why has that been valuable? Well, because you, any recruiter always gravitates to the negative that's happened the day. Yeah. So they get a fee in first thing in the morning and then you have like three dropouts and I don't know, a client saying to go yeah, away or whatever. Yeah. And then you, you lose sight of the good thing that happened in the morning. So mm. I think for me, almost having that down physically on a piece of paper every day that goes, that's good. You don't, you, you're then kind of going, okay, okay, this might sound, you know, it might feel bad for me, but I've got all these things today that are good. Even if it's mm. one good thing. No, I think, I think... Don't lose sight of it, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, what you're, I think that's really interesting because it is very easy to forget where you were. Yeah. Or we're salespeople. We're extroverts, mm. typically. We're competitive natured people it's really easy to gravitate always to, to negative. So I think not losing sight of that, the little quick wins, you know, they're, yeah. they're the real key things to keep you self-motivated. Okay. Should be. Couple final things then. 
So six months in, yeah. it, would you go back and do anything differently? Yeah. Again, what? A few things. Go on, talk to me. Um, kind of almost, <laughs> that sounded like I'm contradicting what I said before, getting too many people's advice. So I went out. Mm, that's and a good got, point. I went out and got advice, really good advice. But then I almost got went to too many people to get that's advice. Interesting. And then I was getting this conflict of okay, should I be doing that or that? Yeah. So almost select two or three people that you trust or or you want to reach out to, you know, the recruiters, whatever. Um, get their advice, digest it, and then, and then and execute. And then execute I what like you want to do. That's a really good advice. Um, but but don't don't listen to too much too many. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Just I can just get diluted. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, set be disciplined with what you're going to do mm. because. The temptation when you're on your own is to, if, if a client says to you, Martin, I know this isn't your normal bar, but can you go and recruit a, yeah. I don't know, whatever. The temptation is to say yes to everything. So true. So you've got to be so disciplined when you start because you'll just go, yeah, I'll do that. And you How hard is it to say no though, at the beginning? It's so hard. I, I picked up a job, I also met the client, but I picked up a job which was like, it was just nothing to do with what I was doing. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was literally like two weeks in, I hadn't found a candidate, and they were a bit like, what's going on? I had to say to them, look, I'm really sorry. I've kind of just jumped the gun a bit yeah. there. So I think make sure you're, whatever you're specializing, yeah. stay rid, you know, stay focused on yeah. that. Don't. I think at the same time, be open that it might change or yeah, yeah, flexible, absolutely. but I think know what you don't want to do or how you don't want to work. Yeah. I, I had my first experience of this over the last couple of weeks and um, I, I said no for the first time. Yeah. Because they basically proposed how they want me to work with them. Right, okay. And it was, wasn't how I've... It's your way. Yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah, yeah. like... I mean, it was actually like... It sounded great. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And I actually said... I sort of said, yeah, okay, I'm open to it, blah, blah, blah. Sat down with him again. I was like, I just want to make sure I'm on the same page, like what you're proposing, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay, right, sweet, let's do it. And I instantly regretted it. Really? Yeah. yeah. So then I had to obviously yeah. call them, have the tail in between my legs and be like, look... I know I said yes, but I'll be honest, like, I was thinking about all weekend and this is why I can't work like that. And it was really interesting, actually, because what happened was they then basically said to me, well, look, we do really want to work with you. Like, we, th I think it would be stupid for you to not work with us. There's a huge opportunity long term, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, that's fair enough. Mm. But this is how I want to work. So then I'm now working with them, but it's, it's like how I've yeah. worked with, how I, everyone I've worked with in the last four months and how I want to work right now. Yeah. But, it, I, it was, but I, had, I said yes. And then I said no, which yeah. I just made it more difficult. Yeah, and that's that. exactly what it's I did. It's so hard. But if you say no, people respect you more for it. Yeah, if you so don't true. go back in the future, because they'll go, okay, you, you're standing yeah. by what your USP is or what your specializing yeah. is. And yeah, let, let, let's touch base in the future. People aren't going to walk away forever. Yeah. I think that's sometimes in your head when you're going, yeah, right, it's a new job. Like, I've got, got yeah, a job yeah. on. Because like, again, it, was kind of, it just got instant. It was like, yeah. this is going to be a shit show. Yeah. Like, don't do it. Yeah. But I didn't listen to it. Stay and true then, to your brand. Yeah, literally. And then, yeah. and then now it's like, okay, we work together. And if it, if my gut is being completely right and it's not great at all, I mean, I'll definitely deliver and work with them. But and then I can learn from that and go, you know what, guys, look, it's been great. I've delivered, but I'm I'm all right now. Like I don't I don't want to work with you anymore. And this is why. Yeah. Because it's hard. It's hard at the beginning to be yeah. like, no. Well, it's easy if you've got a, a shed load of clients and loads That's of stuff. I mean. You can just go, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, pick, yeah. Pick a choose like, what you want. But to yeah. be like, no, and then yeah. they're like, why? Yeah. Well, it's just like my guts are telling me. Do you know what I mean? It's hard. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so important to stand your ground. And again, I've had advice from that. Like, stand your ground. This is what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be disciplined and, and so be respectful for that. Too much advice. Be careful. Yep. Be strict with what, you, what you're willing to do, what you're not to do. Yep. Anything else? Um, listen to your gut. Because mm. I've listened to my gut for my whole career. And look, I've made a load of mistakes. Yeah, so yeah. Don't get me wrong. Um, but generally, listen to my gut has got me to kind of where I am today. So... Um, I've got loads to learn still, don't get me wrong, yeah, but, yeah. but generally my gut's been right. So if the gut doesn't feel right, whether that's a, a move to another recruitment business, whether that's an investment opportunity, whether that's just someone you're hiring or, or whatever client you want to take on board, just if your gut says that doesn't feel right, then go with your gut. Yeah, I like it. So before we finish, mate, yeah. one or two questions, um, just because I've had quite a few messages about it recently. First one, counter offers. We should go to advice. <laughs> <laughs> For the statistics of 87%. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've, I've just had quite a few messages recently. It's quite interesting because a few people have said that. I think the last person I asked has said, you know what, they have actually definitely been quite way more common this year. Yeah, they have. I, I agree with that. Yeah, so that's really interesting, right? So let's, let's talk about it because I've got quite a few messages. So hopefully, because it, it is the typical, like if I think now, the spiel that I'd give someone if they're considering the counter offer is, look, the majority of people that accept the counter offer will not stay in their role. Yeah. 
why would you accept that role? And it's taken them six months to realize that you're this valuable to them, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Go down yeah, that absolutely. sort of avenue. So like, what comes to mind for you if you're trying to deal with, there's obviously only a certain amount you can do, yeah. but what's your sort of, what do you think when you're having to deal with a counter offer situation? Uh, so what, so I th th there's two ways I'd answer. I guess from, from training up people over the yeah. years and stuff, I always say to them, have you done all your investigative yeah. work with the candidate at the start? I.e., one of your first questions for any new candidate for a job is, have you spoke to your boss internally? Yeah. What could they do to make you stay? What could you do to make you stay? Can they do anything? Yeah. Is, is so have you, have you qualified everything yeah. now or yeah. have you missed a few things? Because ultimately, m most majority of counter offers are through money. There are money yeah. in. They throw money at them and it's to your yeah, point, yeah, yeah. Oh, why didn't they do that six months ago or yeah, whatever? Yeah, yeah. But I think at the start of it, again, it's understanding from the candidate, is it money? And I always, I always say to candidates, don't worry if it is, like, a bit like recruiters. Mm. If you're leaving for money, that, that's fine, but we need to know that because no one likes saying that almost when they're talking to it as a yeah. candidate. They, no one likes to say, oh, I want to move because I want 10 grand more. Or they'll say, oh, a new opportunity, which basically means that. Yeah. So I think that's the first thing from a, a recruiter to a recruiter perspective. Interrogate the start, because you'll find your counter offer issues will, will be less yeah. down the line. You're right, it happens. Like yeah. counter offers absolutely There's happen. So There's that. only so much you can do. But I think just almost understanding it, because certainly, again, from the, the, the younger me, someone counter offer me and literally emotions in it. No, 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 you want this, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, actually listen to them, active listening. You know, talk about earlier on, like, listen to them, understand what, why are they, why are they mm. looking to leave? Uh, why are they looking to stay, sorry? Like, you know, there could be a senior role with, you know, global responsibility they weren't getting before. Fair play, like all the best. Yeah. But I think just interrogating that all the way through the process, particularly at the start, and then mm. every time you, you're having your candidate on interview, how'd it go, any reservations, have you spoken yeah, to the yeah. in, internal team? I'm always really nervous when any candidate goes into a process and hasn't had any conversation with their boss with their at boss. all about, yeah. I'm a bit unhappy or I'm looking for a new development yeah. or whatever. Cool, I like it. But it happens and it's crap. <laughs> uh, other question. What's the best reason you've had from a candidate that couldn't attend an interview? <laughs> <laughs> um, what comes to mind? Oh, actually, yeah. So I had one last year. Um, it was her dog's birthday. Wow. So she, yeah, so she literally called me in the morning. She was in, meant to be in at nine and I got, I got a call on my way into work but literally like half an hour before. And she said, I'm really sorry. I forgot it's my dog's birthday and me and my husband are taking the dog out for the day. What, and what she, she placed her and she was due to start? No, no, no. She was going into an interview. So her, she was going in for an interview at nine o'clock. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was about interviews. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she was, <laughs> she, she was literally going for a nine o'clock interview and a half eight. She calls me. I'm really sorry. I forgot it's my dog's oh birthday. My and me and my husband are God. going out for the day with a dog. What can you say to that? You, you can't say, oh, don't be so. Oh, I love dogs. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm just like, really? Right, okay. Fine. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, I, I thought Ringling, I was generally gob. I was just like, what? Gobsmacked. I was just like, what? Yeah, like send me the pictures. Like, yeah, yeah. Hope you have a great. good day. So, do you want to rearrange it? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, that was probably the most random one. Thank you, mate. Um, cool. So, look, before we finish, what, what are you excited about, mate? Six months in, what's going on in uh, your world? Yeah, so exciting times for me. So, um, just got uh, some new offices in Southampton, nice. which, is, which is awesome. So, um, setting up there, um, just about to hopefully hire the first person wow. into Talent Drive to be, to be in there. Yeah, which is awesome. So, um, and what are you, do you want experience hires? Do you want, do you so want to yeah, he's someone an experienced guy? He's, he's, um, I, I knew him, I've known him for a few years from the industry and stuff, nice. and uh, real sound guy. That's so, exciting. yeah, he's, he's coming to join next month, which is awesome. Um, and um, yeah, I've just started off a, a talent share referral scheme, which is to a local charity near where I live, Jesus oh, wow. House, Children's Hospice. So we donate £200 of every fee if a oh, candidate's nice. referred, which that's is amazing. great. And, that, and that's one of the beauties of doing a business on your own. You can give you back can to the community. Like that. Yeah, absolutely. Do that. That's amazing. So that's a really cool initiative that just started out. Cool. And uh, yeah, see where the next sort of six months go. It's but like yeah, it. it's going well. Um, so last question I ask everyone. If, uh, if, if Martin could obviously communicate to every single recruit out there, they take on your advice... They'd implement it, can be a word, a phrase. What would you say? A word? A phrase, anything. Be authentic. Nice. I thought you might go for that. <laughs> it's a word I've used. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Definitely. Mine, it's been a pleasure, mate. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. Good to see you.